In this video, we're going to think about eating and meal times. The first thing that we need to think about when thinking about eating is it's a very personal thing. It's something people get a lot of pleasure from and it's something that people can be very sensitive to. Our mouths are the most sensitive part of our body, so sensitivity to tastes, temperature, textures or different food types can be very difficult to move on from. It is possible, however, using different tips and hints that we have in this video. The first thing is to make meal times and food preparation fun and engaging for children. Try getting children involved in thinking about what they would like to eat during the week. You could have a look on websites to find different interesting meals or you could try taking children to the supermarket to pick different fruits, vegetables, different shapes of pasta. Also, try getting children involved in meal preparation at home. The child's more likely to be interested if they've been able to be creative and engaged in the meal. They might want to show people what they've made. You could try making fun pizzas with different toppings, different sauces with different types of vegetables in them. The other thing that can be very helpful is engaging children in messy play. Some children don't like the temperature or taste or textures of foods and this can sometimes be overcome by engaging in these different sensations in a play-based environment. Think about using Play-Doh, paints, even foodstuffs themselves. These sorts of activities will need to be very carefully graded. Children that are very sensitive are unlikely to suddenly want to put their hands in very sticky, messy items. But slowly building up, starting with dry items like pastas or rices to play with, we try hiding toys in them and gradually moving up to different sorts of textures on children's hands and on their faces can help them to very slowly develop a tolerance to different temperatures, tastes and textures. The other thing that can work very well is having family meal times where children can model off their parents and brothers and sisters. If you have family meal times, what you could try is putting a little taster plate on the side of the children's normal plate so that the food isn't touching but is available to them. Make sure that you don't create a fuss, make sure that you don't draw a huge amount of attention to the child that doesn't want to eat, but make it clear that there's different things available to them. Sometimes it can help to grade the activity. By this we mean initially just tolerate having the new food in their area whilst everybody's eating or even just being around people that are eating a food that isn't favoured by them. Slowly encourage the child to perhaps touch the food, lick it, taste it. You could even encourage that it's okay to spit a food back out if, if the taste isn't tolerated by the child. We know that it takes a huge number of different tastes of a food to be able to tolerate it. Just because a food's rejected once doesn't mean that you shouldn't try again with the same food item. It's very important to remember that this is a very difficult area for children to tolerate, so reward trying rather than succeeding. Reward children for having the food in the same area as them, reward them for licking, reward them for just accepting the new food stuff on their plate. The other very important part of meal times is thinking about the motor side. Think about how's the child sitting on their chair. Are they sitting nicely? Are they well supported? Are their feet flat on the floor? And is the chair and table height correct for them? If the child's posture is incorrect, it will become very difficult for them to use their hands and mouth effectively. There are lots of different cutlery items available. If you have a look on the internet, you will find different sizes and shapes of cutlery. Some cutlery is moulded particularly to, ch to children's hands to enable them to engage in this activity more effectively. Have a look and see what might work well for your child. If you do purchase any specially adapted knives and forks and spoons, try using them in play first. You might want to try using Play-Doh or soft food items to teach children to cut up their food. It's much easier to develop these skills in play than at meal times when children are hungry. The final thing that can work quite effectively is having a non-slip mat underneath the child's dinner plate. This prevents the plate from moving around and makes it much easier for the child to focus. Please remember, as we said right at the beginning, that food is a very sensitive subject and it can take a long time to develop new skills. Try inputting just a little strategy, one at a time, and you'll soon notice big differences.